Okay, maybe Cactus AB Unit 5, Day 1 Office Hours. This was the assignment. You should check your odds on the back of the book. There were two evens, which I've listed the answers there. Problem 58, K equals 1. Problem 60, X equals 9 fourths. So I hope you've tried all these. Um, and um, let's, let's do them. So number 1. Y equals 4x to the 7th. So the derivative of that would just be power rule 28x to the 6th. I'll probably write small. Fit a lot more of these on here. <clears throat> Number 3. Y equals 3x to the 8th. That's 2x plus 1. Y prime is 24x to the 7th plus 2. These ones should probably seem not bad to you guys. Power rule, we've been doing that one a while. 5, Y equals pi cubed. This is where people are going to make the mistake. They're going to be like, oh, Y prime is 3 pi squared. No, pi cubed is a number. Y prime is 0. Okay. 7, uh, y equals negative 1 third, x to the 7th, plus 2x, minus 9. So you, we could distribute, like as we do it, like this is all of these things, you can get the negative 1 third, whatever derivative in here. So negative 7 thirds, x to the 6th, minus 2 thirds. That works. I mean, you could distribute it first if you... Feel more comfortable. All right. 9. Y equals AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D, where A, B, C, and D are constants. That means that they're like, they're just numbers. So Y prime equals 3AX squared. So we're not doing product rule here plus 2bx, they're just numbers, plus c, under of d, which is just number would be 0. <clears throat> um, okay. So, see, 11, y equals negative 3x to the negative 8, plus 2 square root of x. Now, this x and negative 8 is actually very convenient for taking derivatives. Um, this right here, this is x to the 1 half, right? So y prime equals positive 24 x to the negative 9th plus 2 times 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So we could write this answer... You know, we could write it y prime equals uh, 24x to the negative ninth plus x to the negative one half. But I'm probably going to ask you, and this might be the way the book has it. Sometimes the way the book has it might not be my favorite. I'm, I'm probably going to ask you on a test to rewrite it with that negative exponents. So let's go ahead and start trying that. And we could also change that one half back to a square root, which is pretty nice. So that's a, I think that's a nicer form of the answer. Thirteen uh, x to the negative three plus one over x to the seventh. So I would probably change this to all negative exponents. Okay, I mean you could do quotient rule with that. But that's unnecessarily messy. This is gonna be a lot easier. So f prime of x equals negative three x to the negative four minus seven x to the negative eighth. So, I mean, that could be your answer. Like I said, though, I'm probably usually going to want you to change it back to positive exponents for your final answer. So let's go ahead and do that on these, even if the back of the book has answers with negative exponents. I want them without negative exponents. Okay, uh, 15 fx equals 3x squared plus 6. 2x 
minus one fourth. Now, um, I, you know, probably the easiest way to do this problem is just distribute it, right? So we're going to get a 6x cubed minus 3 fourths x squared plus 12x minus 3 halves. I, you know, you could do product rule, but this is going to be a simple power rule now. 18x squared minus 3 halves x plus 12. Proctor rule would give you the same thing, but um, I think that would be a lot tougher. Um, I mean, so let me go ahead and do the product rule anyways. With the original version, it would say, you'd say, well, the first part times the derivative of the second part plus the second part times the derivative of the first part. I'm not sure you can't see that. <clears throat> So first time I just foiled it, took the derivative. Now I'm doing the power rule with the first version. That times derivative of that, that times derivative of that. You add them, clean it up. This would be a 6x squared plus 12 plus 12x squared minus 3 halves x. And then you could rewrite it like this. Uh, 18x squared minus 3 halves x plus 12. So same answer, either way. <clears throat> okay, 17. So we can use the same idea here, so I'll probably do this two different ways. Might be good to just practice it both ways. I mean, on homework, you might be trying to do problems more than one way. On a test, you're just picking your best way, most effective. So, you know, if we did uh, product rule, I think product rule might make more sense here. It, it just takes off, you know, say, well, this first one times the derivative of the second one should be negative 6x and negative fourth minus or x to the negative 5 plus 2x to the negative 3 plus x to the negative 4. The derivative of the first one is going to be 3x squared plus 14x. <clears throat> now, I would leave these as negative exponents until you finish the distribution because then you can just use rules of exponents. So this is going to be, you can distribute this to everything. So that's going to be negative 6x to the negative 1 minus 4x to the negative 2, and then you're going to distribute this. So I distribute that, and now I'm going to distribute this. Negative 42, uh, x to the negative 2, minus 28, x to the negative 3, and you're going to distribute the 8, positive 48, x to the negative 4, plus 32, x to the negative 5, and then we're going to distribute these over here. This is kind of messy. Right now, we're just simplifying it. We already did the calculus. Now we're just trying to clean it up. Plus 6x to the negative 1, plus 28x to the negative 2, plus 3, um, plus 3x to the negative 2. Let me make sure I did that right. So I did those. All right, okay, now I did this one. So I'm distributing this now. Plus 14, x to the negative 3. Ugh. So we could uh, combine like terms. And there's a lot of them. So let's see. Um, start with the most positive exponents. I think there's an x to the negative one right here, but there's a negative six x, and they actually cancel each other out. Okay, so there's no more x to the negative ones. How about negative two? Negative four, negative 46, positive uh, 18, 21. Did I miss anything? 
<clears throat> so, there's all the negative two ones. <clears throat> 31, negative 46. Excuse me. Uh, negative 15. X to negative 2. And then cubed, uh, 14, negative 28, minus 14, X to negative 3. And then that's the only 48x to negative 4, and 32x to negative 5. Usually write them in ascending order, or descending order of powers, standard form. Um, okay, well, that was just kind of a lot of mythy algebra. Now, <clears throat> uh, we would then maybe also want to write it without negative exponents, so... This is what it would look like without negative exponents. Now, the other way is we could distribute it. So, and just avoid all the particle stuff. So, <clears throat> distribute to start with, you would get a I'm not doing derivative yet. Uh, 2x to the 0 plus x to the negative 1 plus 14x to the negative 1 plus 7x to the negative 2 minus 16x to the negative 3 minus 8x to the negative 4. <clears throat> and I mean, we could clean that up a bit. That's just going to be 2 plus 15 x to the negative 1 plus 7 x to the negative 2 minus 16 x to the negative 3 plus 8 x to the negative 4. And then we just take the derivative with power rule. So that's going to be negative 15 x to the negative 2 minus 14 x to the negative 3 plus 48 x to the negative 4 plus 32 x to the negative 5 <clears throat> if you look, that's the same answer we got right up here. That might have been a little easier. I mean, there's a lot more distribution on that one <clears throat> after the fact. Of course, like I said, let's write these with positive exponents for final answers. Now, the negative exponents were really helpful for while you were doing the work. I actually, I think that's better during the work. Okay, so that was 17. 19 f of x equals 3x squared plus 1 squared, which is 3x squared plus 1 times 3x squared plus 1. And then we could just distribute it. It'd be 9x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 1. And then the derivative of that would be 36x to the third plus 12x to the first. I mean, you could do product rule. You could say, okay, 3x squared plus 1 times the derivative of that would be 6x plus 3x squared plus 1 times derivative of the other one would be 6x. And then distribute 18x cubed plus 6x plus 18x cubed plus 6x. And then 36x cubed plus 12x. Same answer. <clears throat> okay. So... You could have done it that way. So. Uh, 21. Now these problems, uh, problem 21 says to find y prime. So you're looking for y prime at 1. And uh, give you the function y equals 1 over 5 thirds, or five, 1 over 5x minus 3. Now, <clears throat> there's two options here. Well, nah, mainly one option. We're going to do quotient rule. Y prime equals low d high. d high is going to be zero because low d high minus high d low 
all over low squared. There's lots more, so that goes away. So y prime is negative 5 over 5x minus 3 squared. But now we're going to plug 1 into it, evaluate it at 1. And we're going to get, <coughs> excuse me, negative 5 over 4. So, okay. The next problems are pretty much asking the same thing to evaluate the derivative at one. They word it a little different. They say to find dy dx at x equals one. Well, it's the same thing as that. That means y prime at one. Okay. So. <clears throat> Skip the part. Sorry. 23. We're just doing the derivative dy dx. It says to find, or no, it's no. Oh, this is weird. It's fine. It says find dx dt. So uh, we're taking the derivative with respect to t. So this kind of looks like a, like a motion, like a motion problem at times. So. so we'll do quotient rule dx dt or x prime equals low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So that gives you that. There you go. Now, on to the next problems. They tell you to do dy dx, which is kind of like the normal derivative. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see, y equals 2x minus 1 over x plus 3. So I'm going to do quotient rule, y prime or dy dx, uh, low d high minus high d low all over low squared. And so that's going to be 2x plus 6 minus 2x plus 1. And cleans up a little bit. So that's the derivative. Then we're going to plug 1 into it. And we're going to get 7 sixteenths. <clears throat> 27 is y equals 3x plus 2 over x times x to negative 5 plus 1. Should we do a product with the big quotient inside of it? Mm, you could if you want, but I think we could we could figure this out. Let's let's rewrite this. This is the same thing as x to negative 1, right? Times that. So let's just distribute all this out. Then it'll be super straightforward. Um, I'm going to distribute this into there. So we already have negative x1, so maybe that'll make it easier. x to negative 6 plus x to negative 1. And then we're going to foil it. So it's going to be 3x to the negative 5, because that's the x to the first, rules of exponents, plus 3x to the 0, plus 2x to the negative 6, plus 2x to the negative 1. It's going to be a 1. So y equals uh, 2x to the negative 1 plus 3x to the negative 5 
plus 2x to the negative 6. So just a bunch of algebra, clean it up. Now let's do the derivative, negative 2x to the negative 2 minus 15x to the negative 6 minus 12x to the negative 7. <clears throat> then we're going to plug 1 in, which is the same as like doing negative 2 over 1 squared minus 15 over 1 to the 6th minus 12 over 1 to the 7th which is just going to be negative 2 minus 15 minus 12 so that's negative 29 negative 29 <clears throat> you tried the other way but I, I think you might regret it I don't know okay jumping at 39 says these are multiple part problems. It says find g prime 4, and they're telling you that f of 4 equals 3, and f prime of 4 equals negative 5. So part a says gx equals the square root of x, f of x. So this is a problem where they give me kind of a generic function, and they're going to have it perform derivative rules without actually knowing the function. So this is going to be a product rule. So we're going to do uh, square root of x times f prime. So you're like, well, what's f? How do I take derivative? Just write f prime. Plus f of x times derivative of the other part, which is that's the same as a 1 half. 1 half x to the negative 1 half power rule. Right? And so then we're going to plug 4 into that. And it's going to be the square root of 4 times f prime of 4 plus f of 4 times 1 over 2 square root of 4. Change that negative exponent to positive, the 1 half back to a square root. <clears throat> All right. And then uh, this is going to be 2. And they told you f prime of 4 was negative 5 right up here, right? And they told you f of 4 was 3. And square root of 4 is 2, so it's going to be 1 fourth. So it's going to be negative 10 plus 3 fourths, or negative 9 1 fourth, or negative 37 fourths, or negative 9.25. Okay. Oh, that was just part A. Okay. Part B, I'll do part B here. We give you gx equals f of x over x. So we're going to do quotient rule on this one. g prime of x equals low d high minus high d low all over whole squared. So then we're going to plug 4 into that. And uh, f prime of 4, they told us, was negative 5. And f of 4, they told us, was 3. It's going to be negative 20, negative 23 over 16. Or negative 1 and 7 sixteenths if you want. I don't think you need to do that. But, okay. Uh, 41 says find capital F prime of 2. Uh, given that f of 2 equals negative 1, f prime of 2 equals 4, g of 2 equals 1, g prime of 2 equals negative 5. Okay. So a says capital F of x equals 5 little f of x plus 2g of x. So we're going to take the derivative of that, f prime equals 5, don't need to do product rules, just a number, f prime of x plus 2g prime of x. So then we're going to plug 2 into this. And f prime of 2, they said, was 4. 
and g prime of 2, they said it was negative 5. It's going to be 20 minus 10 equals 10. That's A. <clears throat> B, capital F of X, is defined as F of X minus 3GX. So F prime is going to equal little f prime minus 3G prime. So then we're going to plug 2 into this. And look up the values. F prime 2 was 4. G prime of 2 was negative 5. 4 plus 15 is 19. Okay, C, capital F of X equals little f of X, G of X. So this is going to be a product rule, <clears throat> right? It's going to be a product rule. So F prime is going to equal one of the functions. Doesn't matter. I usually just start with the first one times the derivative of the other plus the other way around. G of X times F prime of X. And then we're going to plug two into it. We're going to look up the values and plug them in. F of 2 was negative 1. G prime of 2 was negative 5. G of 2 was 1. F prime of 2 was 4. It's going to be 5 plus 4 is 9. Okay, so that's part C. Part D was f of x equals little f of x over g of x. So that's going to be quotient rule. So we're going to do low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Okay. And we're going to plug 2 into it. Then we're going to plug the values in. G of 2 was 1. F prime of 2 was 4. F of 2 was negative 1. G prime of 2 was negative 5. G of 2 was 1. It's going to be 4 minus 5 over 1. It's going to be negative 1. All right. Um, forty-three says to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of y equals f of x at x equals negative three, and they tell you f negative three is two. So they've given you the the x y pair for your line, which is one thing you need, and then you also need the slope. Um, and they've told you that too. They've told you f prime of negative three equals five your slope so you're ready to go y minus 2 equals 5 times x plus 3 done leave it point slope form if you really insist you could change it to slope intercept which is what the book has but and that could be an issue on multiple choice you're going to have to make your answers look like theirs but either one i think that's what the book has okay Getting close. A few more problems. <clears throat> so problem 45 is next. And uh, let's see. 45 says find the second derivative. Okay. Now we didn't really do any examples like this class, but we've been doing second derivatives, concavity. 
acceleration. So that's just the you take the first derivative and then you take the derivative of the first derivative to get the second derivative. So a y equals seven x cubed minus five x squared plus x. Well, the first derivative is twenty one x squared minus ten x plus one, and the second derivative is forty two x minus ten. Done. That's part A. Part B is y equals 12x squared minus 2x plus 3. First derivative is 24x minus 2. Second derivative is 24. C. y equals x plus 1 over x. So we could do quotient rule. By the way, there's kind of another trick you could do. You could treat it like x plus 1 times x to the negative 1, and you could do product rule instead, which I don't know. might be easier. I don't know. I'll try the quotient rule low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So it's going to be x minus x minus 1. It's going to give you negative 1 over x squared. That's the first derivative. So then the second derivative, <clears throat> you, would, you, could do, you could do quotient rule again, or you could do just a simple power rule, which would definitely be worth it, right? I would just say, oh, let's just do that. 2x to negative 3, change it back to positive exponents. <clears throat> or you could do, you could do, you know, quotient rule again, B uh, low D high minus high D low all over low squared. Now that goes away. You get positive two X over X to the fourth, and then you use rules of exponents to uh, simplify. Alternatively, like I said, you could do this way and then do a product rule. So you would do, okay, well, y prime is x plus 1 times negative 1x to negative 2 plus x to negative 1 times your first one. And then you clean it up, be negative x to negative 1 minus x to negative 2 plus x to the negative 1. Those guys would cancel each other out and so you get negative x to negative 2. The second derivative would just be positive 2x to negative 3. That's kind of nice, right? Avoiding quotient rule. Quotient rule is kind of kind of gross. I mean you need to be able to do it, but there's going to be situations where you could avoid doing it. Okay. Um <clears throat> Do part D. D was y equals 5x squared minus 3, 7x cubed plus x. So we could do we could do product rule, or we can multiply it all out, which I think is going to be easier. You can just boil it out first. Uh, 35x to the fifth plus 5x cubed minus 21x cubed minus 3x, y equals 35x to the fifth, minus 16x cubed, minus 3x, and then just do the derivative of that, should be uh, 100, 175x to the fourth, minus 48x squared, minus 3, and then the second derivative would be, let's give me what, uh, 35700x to the third minus 96x. So you do that. That's, I think, the easier way is just clean it up first. But you can do product rule. Should get the same answer in the end, but oh, it's a lot messier. A lot messier. So I'm not even going to show it this time. Um, Okay, and then a couple of tough problems at the end.
58 says find k if the curve, so we're trying to find k, if the curve y equals x squared plus k is tangent to the line y equals 2x. Okay, <clears throat> now here's the deal. Just roughly, you got a parabola, right? And then you got a line, a tangent line at some value k, right? So what do, what do you know about these things? Well, they share a point and they share a slope. And we're gonna use that to help us find k, okay? So, um, we, you know, they share, they share a point. So that means they would have the same y coordinate and we could set their y coordinates equal to each other, right? I don't think we're gonna get very much further on that, but we could use that maybe later. We're probably gonna use system equations. So this is the point they share. They share a slope. So we wanna take the derivative of each of them. So y prime equals two x and y prime of this one equals two and their slopes are going to be equal to each other. Now, um, they're gonna be equal to each other, you know, for k. So we could plug k into this and we get k equals one. I guess up here we could have plugged k in and we get two k equals k squared plus k. <clears throat> so then k squared minus k equals zero and we can factor it k and k equals zero and k equals one. So I guess it's kind of interesting. I think we could have gotten away with um, I don't know. I think we I guess okay, hold on. We don't know that x equals k. It wasn't at k. So let me back up for a second. We could find that x equals 1 here, right? That's what we did. <clears throat> That's not k. And then we can plug it back in up here for all the x's. And then solve for k. It's coincidental that uh, the way you did it, which was wrong, gave us the same answer. So. We use the uh, <clears throat> the slopes being equal to figure out where this happens. And then we plug that x back into the original function for the x's to find the k value. Because there's no k once, this, once you do the slopes. Um, okay, so 59 says, find the x coordinate of the point of the graph of y equals x squared where the parallel, where the tangent is parallel to the secant line that cuts the curve at x equals negative one to two. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're looking for x uh, with the graph of y equals x squared tangent line is parallel to the secant line. You guys know what a secant line is, right? Secant line connects two points. So they tell you the two points, x equals negative one to x equals uh, two. So I guess <clears throat> we can find the slope of the secant line, I think, right? Because, uh, so we could say, well, what's the y value for each of these points? And then let's do the slope of the secant line. It's going to be change in y over change in x. It's going to be 1. So that's the slope of your secant line, which means that the slope of the tangent line has to be the same. So the slope of the tangent line is the derivative. And then you're going to set them equal to each other. And then you can find the x coordinate of where this special thing happens. <laughs> mm, okay. It's a little challenging. Okay. Uh, 60 says find the x coordinate of the point of the graph. So we're looking for x again uh, on the graph of y 
equals the square root of x, where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line that goes through x equals 1 and x equals 4. So same, same, same kind of problem. So we need to find the x and y pairs on the secant line. And do the slope of the secant line, rise over run. We have two points, 2 minus 1 over 4 minus 1 is 1 over 3. So it's the slope of your secant line. And so then the slope of your tangent line is going to be the derivative, which is going to be 1 half x to negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 square root x. And if they're, if they're parallel, then they're going to be equal to each other. <laughs> And then we can solve for the value of x. We can flip both sides upside down, divide both sides by 2, square both sides, x equals 9 fourths. Okay, so those are kind of interesting. Make you think a little more, those last ones. All right, well, I hope you guys got a lot of good practice with derivatives. And we're going we're gonna to get really good at these details and, and a lot of it takes just knowing the rules but more of it's just practice 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 like really practicing it because so easy to make mistakes and and you'll just get faster the more you practice and and make less mistakes <clears throat>